Hi there, my name's Hannah, I'm an ecologist and I'm here at Chalicum Farm on Dartmoor to look at some wildflowers that you'd associate with a species rich grassland. So here you can see that the grassland is incredibly herb rich and by herb rich I mean that the dominant feature in the sward is a wildflower or herbaceous species. So this tiny little plant here is eyebright. If you look very closely at the flowers, you'll see that they've got little yellow kind of centre and some purple lines that come out. They're really very, very beautiful when you look up close, probably one of my favourites. And you generally associate them with um, species rich grassland. You don't tend to find them in grasslands that have high nutrient levels. This species parasitises other grassland plants and extracts nutrients from them. So they're a hemiparasite. Um, they don't rely solely on those plants to gain their nutrients, but they do actually get energy from the sun as well. Buttercups are a real key feature in a lot of meadows and lawns and grasslands. This is meadow buttercup. There are two species that tend to be more common in meadows in Devon, and that's meadow buttercup and creeping buttercup. Now meadow buttercup tends to be a lot taller and is actually an indicator really of a semi-improved grassland. Creeping buttercup, on the other hand, tends to be quite tolerant of fertiliser and trampling, so it's quite a hardy species, really. Creeping buttercup creeps, as this is demonstrating, um, but the leaf is also different. Uh, the leaf comprises, really, of three sections, and this top section, the terminal lobe, um, is separated from these two lower lobes, so that's quite characteristic, this kind of three-lobe pattern. Meadow buttercup, on the other hand, here is palmate in shape so it's a bit like a hand and very often if you kind of were to draw a line around the outside of the leaf you can create a pentagon shape so there's some quite clear differences between those two species this is one of the common dandelion look-alikes common cat's ear it is a branched quite tall dandelion look-alike is called cat's ear apparently because it has these tiny stipules up the stem which look uh, like dark triangles which apparently look like cat's ears. So the leaves are very hairy um, and it does look like a very hairy um, dandelion essentially. Um, and if you looked very closely at these hairs you would see that these hairs are simple so they're just like a normal hair. There are other rarer dandelion look-alikes, um, the hawk bits, um, that have forked hairs and they're really good positive indicators of species rich or herb rich uh, unimproved grasslands. Common cat's ear, however, is a semi-improved grassland indicator and you don't find it very often in species poor improved grasslands. Another characteristic species of hay meadows is this plant here which is called yellow rattle, otherwise known as hay rattle. It parasitises grasses, um, it particularly likes very vigorous grasses. The flowers are zygomorphic, which means they are symmetrical in one plane. And it has these funny little um, lips. Uh, the leaves are opposite and serrated and the stem is square, so it's quite a characteristic species really. As it starts to mature, the flowers are less obvious and then these seed pods start to dry out. And then as they become really dry, the seeds rattle inside the pods. Um, as you can see, the seeds are kind of flying out. The seeds themselves are quite disc shaped and once you kind of get your eye in with these, you'll be able to recognise these from a mile off. Because it parasitises grasses, um, it's used as a conservation tool. So if you have a field that's got fairly high nutrient levels, but you want to make it more herb rich, you can put seeds of um, yellow rattle onto your field, um, which then reduces the vigour of the grasses and that produces a field that's much more colourful, better for insects and also it can help you allow the sward to be more open and when the sward's more open then you can introduce other wildflowers to that site also. Another species that you're likely to find in a meadow is common sorrel, very much characterised by this lovely reddy peachy colour when in flower. When you look up close they do look kind of nicely geometrically designed. So common sorrel has quite a pointed leaf often and the base of the leaf has these pointy bits and the pointy bits tend to either point down or point across each other. So 
this particular leaf is showing these points at the end of the leaf, kind of crossing each other like that. This coloration, I suppose, is also really very, very characteristic and very much separates it from the docks, which is on my left here. So this is broadleaf dock. The plants tend to be much larger, particularly for the broadleaf dock, which is quite a big species. So the leaves here are quite um, bulbous, I suppose, at the base, and they don't have those lower projections like the common sorrel. It can be problematic, particularly when it starts to dominate, but actually having a few plants here and there isn't actually a problem. Um, the dock beetle um, needs docks, so having some dock on your land isn't a problem at all. I think just making sure that it doesn't get out of control. Um, and then on the other side of things, this is sorrel and it's definitely not a dock. So even if you do want to get rid of docks, uh, make sure that you have identified the species correctly before you start getting rid of it, because actually this is a nice species to have. So keep your sorrel. Here I'm surrounded pretty much by butterfly orchids and um, this is greater butterfly orchid. If you look up closely um, you can see they've you know, got white flowers, slightly green tinged and they've got very very long spurs so they've got a long tube at the back of the flower. Um, so this is a real rarity actually, not really something you come across very regularly though I'd say Dartmoor's not a bad place to come to if you want to see a butterfly orchid. Clovers are very obvious to tell the difference in terms of white and red clover when they're in flower. The names kind of give it away a little bit. White clover is a species that's quite tolerant of high nutrient levels, so you'll find a lot of this in a species poor improved grassland. Red clover is a bit more sensitive and you only tend to find this in semi-improved, unimproved or species rich grasslands. It's really quite useful to be able to identify these species because if you're trying to make a field more species rich and you've got lots of white clover and then you start to find lots of red clover then you're probably heading in the right direction in terms of nutrient levels. So here we've got common knapweed otherwise known as black knapweed. Locally it's known as hardheads because it's got these rock hard um, buds and in fact when they go into flower they're also quite hard. This species is a really good positive indicator of a species rich and improved grassland. This has a really lovely purple flower which unfortunately isn't quite out at the moment. The leaves are quite characteristic of this species so even when it's not in flower or even nearly in flower um, you can identify this plant from its leaves all year round. If you look at the edge of the leaves, you'll notice that they have very, very tiny teeth that project every now and again. Um, and that means that you can kind of separate this um, plant from other species, particularly devil's bit scabious. Um, devil's bit scabious doesn't have the teeth. Um, so if you find a very simple leaf like this, fairly plain, with tiny little teeth along the edge, uh, the possibility is that you might have a common knapweed, which is a really good positive indicator. Two species that can be confused um, are right next door to each other here, which is quite handy. Uh, we've got self heel, which is another semi-improved grassland indicator, and bugle, which tends to be a little bit more picky and doesn't really like um, much competition or high nutrient levels. They've both got purple flowers of a similar kind of shape and size. With bugle, the leaves are present within the flowers. So there's lots of flowers here as you run up the stem and that's what gives the bugle its pyramidal kind of overall shape. Wherefore, the self heel, the leaves are at the base of the flowering area, making it look quite different. Bugle tends to be found in slightly wetter places, though we're actually in quite a dry location here. Um, the leaves are very glossy. On the other hand, self heel is a bit more hairy and not so glossy. In addition, South Hill very often has a purple edge to the base of the leaf. So another two species to try and keep your eyes peeled for. Here we have this tiny little yellow flower, which is tormental. It has four petals, four yellow petals. Each leaf is divided into three leaflets, but it also has two stipules at the base of the leaf. So sometimes it gives the impression of having five leaflets, but it's actually just the three leaflets with two stipules at the base of the leaf. Tormento is a positive indicator. It's a, a really good species to find in terms of um, trying to find out whether your meadow or grassland is species rich. So here we've got another positive indicator of species rich grasslands. This is bird's foot trefoil. It has bright yellow, pea-like flowers, it's in the pea family. 
leaves which are broken into three leaflets and it also has two stipules. Common bird's foot truffle, which this is, tends to be found in uh, dry places um, which have low nutrient levels. Um, it has a solid stem so if you broke the stem in half you wouldn't find a small hole within it. Greater bird's foot truffle on the other hand tends to be larger, tends to be hairier and it also has a hollow stem and greater bird's foot trefoil you often find in slightly wetter places as well. Another species that you can find in meadows but not confined to meadows uh, is pignut. So they have these classic white umbel flowers, lots of tiny little flowers all clustered together to form an umbel. Uh, it's just going into seed now. When the seeds mature they become quite like a dark burgundy red colour. Um, so this is a really nice species, so you find it in grasslands but also in woodlands and uh, coincidentally there's another species here uh, which is the same. This is bluebell, it's just um, started to set seed. Um, bluebells are found quite frequently in meadows and in Dartmoor and I would say it's actually a quite a nice positive indicator as is pignut. This feathery little leaf belongs to a plant called yarrow. It's got a white, umbel-like flower, but it's not actually related to pignut or any of the other umbellifers. And the leaf smells slightly herbally when crushed, which is nice. We've got a small little St John's wort here, which is slender St John's wort. Really beautifully coloured with yellow flowers usually, but the flowers aren't quite coming out yet. So the buds are actually really lovely in red. Um, this is part of the Hypericum group. There's quite a lot of different St John's worts that you might find, but in a dry acid place the likelihood is it's probably slender St John's wort. The stem of this particular species is round. Um, other St John's worts have square stems or stems with ridges down the either side, so this is quite an easy one to identify. It's not necessarily a positive indicator or anything, but it's a, a nice one to find. So that's a quick summary of a small number of plants that you can potentially find on species rich grasslands such as this one at Chalicum Farm. There's a huge variety of other species that you might find and this just gives you a quick taster. Good luck trying to find your own things.